so what was what was the low point in the journey? What what was the turning point? Well, I guess one turning point because I know for myself there was a lot of little things that sort of stacked up over time and maybe maybe your experience is the same way, but can you can you share with us like a low point in the journey where you were like this has got to change? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Loaded question, right? One I can't even talk about on this podcast, but <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So probably the one that stands out the most. Um, it was it was the most eye opening, awakening part of my life. I I um, I was still working in the corporate job. Okay. I had been working crazy hours for a long time. So holidays, weekends, you know, you're, you're younger, right? You're, you're 20s, 30s, 40s, and you want to get out. You want to do things. You want to, and, and the job had me so focused on work, 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 work. And, you know, I had built all these things up in my life. Yeah, somebody had to pay for all this stuff. So anyway, I was working constantly. And I started to get really upset with myself. It's like, just keep working, Mike. Just keep working. <laughs> it was silly. But anyway, um, I was getting upset. And I, I got, you know, along with the discontent with the job, I was discontent with my marriage. And that was falling apart. Um, over time, I didn't spend much time with people. I was very isolated. I used to work nights, so I'd come driving home at 7 a.m., okay? And um, <clears throat> one day, uh, it was just after I had heard that I had developed some cancer in my body, okay? It was, uh, it was a real blow to me, and I had been watching my parents um, becoming ill, right? There, I watched their predominant way of seeing the life, seeing their life. Um, I watched how they felt through life. I watched what they were going through. They had split up earlier. So mm -hmm. my mom was living on her own. My dad was living, you know, off in another direction. Um, but anyway, I got to this place where I thought, wow, all life is, is work, making money, paying for all these things. And I, I was really upset and, and I didn't care whether I had a marriage anymore. I mean, it was, it wasn't fulfilling. Nothing really was. Okay. I got myself to that place. And so I'm working away and I, I would go out and drink with buddies and things like that. And that was my fun. So, okay. One day I'm coming home. This is probably the lowest point. This is the turning point. Coming home from work, it's seven o'clock in the morning, okay? I'm just getting off work. It was a January day in Chicago, dreary. Uh, I don't think it was snowing, but you know that windy, really nasty cold. <laughs> and I had, had to work outside a few times that night, okay? So I was outside for a lot of the night. So I'm freezing. I'm getting in my car to drive home and I started up and I'm like, okay, the usual, you know, 90 mile an hour trip to get home. It's like the home was sanctuary, right? Oh, my beautiful place. It was so awesome, right? It was, this was where I had to go. So I, I didn't really do 90, but for a fact, okay? <laughs> so anyway, I'm driving home and um, the car starts to overheat. And I, I'm looking at the temperature gauge and I'm watching, I could hear the wheezing coming from the engine. Okay, so I could tell the engine's overheating. Here it is, minus nine degrees, it's January, it's freezing cold, I'm on a, on a tollway, right? I took this tollway home and my exit was about 15 minutes ahead of, on the road. Um, so I pulled over and I thought, okay, I'll let it cool, let the engine cool down a little bit because it's so cold out, right? Um, but there was no heat in the car because there's no water. The water pump had failed. Okay, this is what I found okay. out. There's no water circulating, so there's no heat in the car. <laughs> so I'm cold. The car, I'm waiting for the engine to cool down. I'm like, screw this. <laughs> I ground on the starter, got the car started. I took off again, right? 
the car died again just before my exit. Ground on the starter, ground on the starter. I mean, I finally got it running. I mean, it got to the point where I had my foot to the floor. There's smoke coming out from under the, the hood. People are looking at you like, hey, buddy. <laughs> You're murdering <laughs> you your car. Right? Yeah, um, <laughs> right. And I, it didn't matter. I, I had gotten to that point where it, that didn't matter, right? right? So I'm driving and I get to about, you know, I'm chugging along and the, the engine's like, tick, tick, tick. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, all the different noises, you know. Uh, but anyway, it was surreal. I'm driving along. I'm, my house is nestled in this beautiful wildlife preserve. My three and a half acres. I mean, the rivers over here, it was just absolutely beautiful. And here I am, you know, trying to get home and it's just, it's so cold. I mean, in the car, it was so cold. I was, so anyway, you, you come peeling into all this beauty in this like smoke, this smoke filled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, choking you can vehicle. smell it in the car, right? You knew <laughs> it's like, okay, Mike, you're destroying your car. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For so yeah. for for anyone in the audience who does not like <laughs> is it, um, mechanically inclined, like I have not been in the past, but I do know now what <laughs> happens to a vehicle when you drive it when it's overheating. Right, you are murdering your car. You're absolutely destroying it. There's, I mean, the damage that you're doing to your car in that moment, you know, is irreparable. Right. Absolutely, and you yeah. know what? I knew it. I knew yeah. it, and, and that moment, it was like I was more important. Hey, yeah, there's a novel idea, right? So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> rather than sit out here and freeze to death in order to save the car, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I get to about 50 feet um, before I get to my driveway, and the engine just bang, you know, just like gives out. So then the power steering went out, right? And there's smoke coming out from under the hood. I'm rolling down, the, rolling down. Well, actually it had electric, it had electric windows. I'm putting down the window. I'm looking and I just turn and it coasts into the bottom of this 400 foot driveway. And I get out and I look and I'm thinking, oh, wow, Mike, this isn't you. What did you just do? You know, what this you isn't just... how you normally would do things. I mean, you're Mike got it all together guy, right? And it's like, well, <laughs> yep, I got it together. And uh, I just closed the door, walked up to the house, went in, got warm, and went to bed. But that day, that day, um, I realized everything had to change. I had morphed into this person that uh, I, I didn't really even know anymore. You know, I was that um upset with the way things were right it's so and I was fascinating alone. how the uh, car yeah. is actually symbolic of you in that moment right like you're just yeah. you got nothing left and you're just you're still just grinding away right well, i can honestly tell you that day danny um i um i became very emotional that day because i was sick I was upset. I was bordering on, I mean, I was very discouraged, right? It's like, okay, what am I, what is this? I mean, I worked so hard for this career. I've made all this money. I've built this beautiful life. What is it that's really missing? What, you know, why is it my heart is not happy? You know, I was yeah. alone because uh, we weren't married anymore. So it was quite an awakening. That was probably the lowest point of my day. I mean, wow. in my life, I mean, and I, um, I realized what my parents were going through. And in that, right at that time, I also realized I probably wasn't going to go back to work. I did for a little while, but I, I looked for other things to do with my life. And, and that's in a whole other story. But um, I realized everything needed to change. I really did. That was the 